Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today, I would like to take a look at three books that I read when I was younger and they really just <laughs> blew my mind. It's They are what really actually kick-started off um, my entire financial journey, my, my entire journey to financial enlightenment, my entire financial freedom, financial independence, financial literacy, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I kind of want to go over the process of where they brought me, um, where I was before I read them and afterward and how I grew because of these books. Because these books really are the main pillars of what changed me into becoming more financially um, responsible and more of a go-getter when it comes to saving, investing, and learning what I need to do to be where I want to be in the future. And I believe that these books can help you too, so that's kind of why I'm going over them. Um, <clears throat> but before we do that, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and consider clicking that red subscribe button, turning it gray, and smash the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm because it really helps out more then you guys know. All right, guys. So basically, whenever I in high school and just getting out of high school, um, I kind of was the regular person. You know, I like to party. Um, I always was a little bit better with money than my friends, but it was never like uh, what I'm doing today, um, or even like nothing to brag about, really. But later on, let's say about around 20 to 21, I started to. Um, I started to wonder why people were rich and what led them there. Like, obviously, they had to have good jobs and they were good with money. But what else out there? Like, why are these people rich, really? And how do they keep money? How do they build wealth? So, really, one of the first things I did was I, uh, I Googled or I YouTubed, you know, millionaire, how to be rich, how to do this, how to do that. And, yeah, you know, if you do that today, you'll get the same videos as I did back then. But one of the books that kept popping up was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And that was one, really one of the first books that I read. And if you don't know what Rich Dad, Poor Dad is, um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad was written by Robert Kiyosaki. And it's about Robert Kiyosaki and his two dads. One of his dads being his real father, which is his poor dad. And his other dad is his best friend's father, which is his rich dad. And it basically goes in on how each dad really shaped his thoughts and his actions on money and investing, basically. And to sum it all up, it basically says that you don't need to be a high earner to become rich because rich people make their money work for them. And that was a new concept to me, really. Making your money work for you. Like I didn't understand. Like I knew what interest was and I knew what the stock market was as, you know, as someone who is aware of it, but I didn't know the depths of what I do today, like and how it can build your wealth. And basically, Robert Kiyosaki, what he does in his book, he goes over the things that happened to him as a kid and what his rich dad, which is his friend's dad, taught him and what his poor dad taught him. His poor dad is his real dad. Now his poor dad is, um, he's actually highly educated, went to college, has a good job, but technically is still poor in his eyes. Poor being because he doesn't make his money work for him. He thinks um, rich people are bad, uh, thinks you know loans are a scam or investing is a scam, basically. And his poor dad, I'm sorry, and his rich dad tells him that, you know, rich people don't work for money. They work for assets. And that is really the first time I came across the word asset. I've heard it before, but not in the context that he says it. Um, working for assets, you know, you know, yeah, we work for money, but what are you doing with that money, really? Like, you, you got to get assets. That's the whole thing. That's how rich people stay rich or become rich, is they work for assets. They're not working for money. And I didn't really understand at the time what he meant, like, yeah, well, you gotta have money. You gotta have money to buy assets of houses and stuff like that and, and make money in the stock market and buying businesses and making businesses. Now that I know everything I know now, you don't really have to have a whole bunch of money to make your money work for you, really. Um, and, and you know, I read the book, I soaked in the information, but I didn't use none of it. And guys, so basically, what I pulled from this book was 
Rich people don't work for money, they work for assets. Even if you make money at your job, you need to consider that as an asset. You need to make that into assets, right? If you exchange in time for money, you need to exchange your time for assets. That's kind of the whole mentality of it, right? So Rich Dad Poor Dad taught me, um, you need to allocate assets if you want to build wealth and maintain it. And the next book is actually the first um, financial book that I read. Uh, and it is probably one of the coolest books as far as like financial wise that I've read ever. I don't know if it's because it's the first book I read and it introduced me to a lot of things in a simple way. Like if you read, if you read this book, you can definitely um, understand it. There's not a whole bunch of big words. It's not, you know, trying to confuse you, trying to talk down to you. It's, it's a story. It's a, it's a bunch of stories put into one. Um, and it's called The Richest Man in Babylon by George S. Uh, Clayson. I have uh, my computer right here. I'm, I'm reading the, the, the guy's name. I didn't know it. Um, but so George S. Clayson. And basically, so The Richest Man in Babylon was written in like the 20s or whatever. And the book is so good that it's still being printed today. Like they're still making new editions of it today. Like that's how good this book is. And basically it dispenses financial information through a collection of parables set 8,000 years ago in ancient Babylon. So this is the richest man in Babylon. And in this book, if you want to start your journey or you're on your journey and you still want some more clarification, this is probably the best book to start with because it really simplifies everything. This is like the beginner's edition and it's not, it's got a story to it also, which really makes it more interesting to read. Um, the richest man in Babylon talk about simple, simple uh, ideas. Basically, what I got from this, pay yourself first, make your money work for you. That's the two, that's the two main things in this book. Pay yourself first and make your money work for you. So I had never heard of the concept, pay yourself first. I knew about make your money work for you, right? But no. <clears throat> so I had, so I had never heard of the concept, pay yourself first. Um, I never heard of the concept, uh, make your money work for you. I kind of knew it, but not really, but pay yourself first. I didn't realize. So if you don't understand what the concept of pay yourself first is, it's whenever you get paid, you pay yourself first, then you pay your bills. Then you pay everyone else you owe. Why are you going to pay them your hard earned money first and take a little bit of what's left? That's not how you should act in, uh, a financial, you know, from a financial standpoint, you want to pay yourself first and then pay these people because once you pay yourself first, they can't take that from you. When you pay them and you have a little bit left over, you can't really save. So that's why it's really important to pay yourself first. Um, this is a great book. Like it's still, it's still a book that I'll skim over. Or I'll listen to the audio book of it today just because it's such a great book. This book really, I mean, really pushed my, my wig back, right? It really um, made me think like, you know, these are concepts that have been around for such a long time and they have always worked and they will always work. It's just sometimes they do evolve a little bit with the times. And, and if you read these books and you apply the concepts in them, you are guaranteed to be well on your way to financial independence and financial freedom. And it will open up a broader spectrum of life. Like there's more than, than, than one way to, to do something. If you want to become rich, if you want to become financially free, these books are a great foundation to start. And you know, after reading this book and Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I, I then started to apply a little bit, right? I started to apply the pay yourself first concept and to try to make your money work for you concept. Um, and just slowly learning that. And then once I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I learned about gaining assets. So I knew how to make my money work for me after that, right? Um, it's just the whole act of doing it, making it happen was the whole part. And I was stagnant for quite a few years before I actually applied these lessons. Um, but the sooner you start with them, the better. And the last and final book, which is probably the most, one of the most um, important books that I've read to this day, 
is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And if you have never read this book and you don't know anything about it, I, you need to read it, especially if you're trying to change your life, if you're an ambitious person, if you want to learn how you work in a career standpoint or from a financial standpoint, you need to read this book. Um, so basically, Napoleon Hill goes through this book and he examines the psychological power of your thought and your brain process in furthering your career, especially for, you know, monetary and personal satisfaction. Um, basically meaning, you know, your thoughts and your feelings have control over you. Uh, kind of like quantum mechanics or quantum physics, whatever you want to say, kind of like the secret, uh, how, what is it called? Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the documentary, The Secret, this is what they're talking about here. Uh, if you want it bad enough, you, you, you will get it, but you have to want it in a certain way. And really, reading this book really expanded my mind and brought to the realization that a lot of things are connected. Uh, in this life and in this world and especially with people and feelings and all that um, So that opened me up to a different world not just financially, but on a different spectrum a different plane and It was probably the most one of the most influential books that I have read um, It is a fantastic book So basically Napoleon Hill researched something like 40 millionaires to find out what makes them successful and basically they all do pretty much the same principles and he tells you exactly what they are, which is thought, thinking is gonna happen and making it happen. Using your brain and your thoughts and your feelings to really um, make people around you and make your decisions right and just really push forward into what you need to happen. Like in order to make what you want happen, he pretty much shows you exactly how they do that basically what that all boils down to is what the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve and really it's a psychological it, it tells you about the psychological aspects of being a um, a go-getter being a person who really wants something and, and after I read this book is really when I started to apply everything that I learned um, previously from those two books to books in between because I did read books in between and prior but these three are the main ones that stand out that are really at the foundation of what I call my financial enlightenment and so think of it like this this is how it happened for me the richest the richest man in Babylon was the wood okay rich dad poor dad was lighter fluid or gas they can grow rich was the match that set it all on fire that really set that fire in me to get me going and realize yo i can do this you know other people are doing it that's why i started this journey to figure out how people are doing it why they're doing it not just why but how can someone do this in such a short amount of time right um and i pretty much found out through these three books um and i'm glad i read it like i highly recommend you guys read these three books if you haven't um, they are total game changers for me. These books literally changed my life. They, they literally changed the way I think and thought at the time. But guys, look, definitely, I, I definitely suggest you guys read these books because they are really great books. I hope they change your life like they did mine. But look, um, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Look, if you found value out of this video please go ahead and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you made it this far and you haven't, subscribe yet go ahead and hit that red subscribe button but look yo if you want to continue your journey to financial enlightenment with me go ahead and click one of these videos guys and look we are out of here um y'all go check these books out i'm sure you can find you can find free free audio books for all of these on youtube so go check that out you don't even have to buy the copy but look i'm gonna get out of here guys good luck with that love y'all